Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 37. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cash Flow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. All right, and welcome uh, to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. Glad that you guys are here. If you haven't already, you know what to do. Go over to learninvestingnow.com. Get your free e-course learning how to become an excellent wholesaler, how to go out there and do real estate using none of your own money or credit. If you haven't done so already, go learninvestingnow.com. Today, though, we're going to talk to one of <laughs> my most favorite, most favorite uh, individuals on the planet because he's he was so responsible for me understanding real estate at the beginning and it it's amazing how some topics and like if you start talking the word taxes some of you just tuned me out I know but if you start talking the word taxes some people go oh my god I never ever ever want to have that conversation again but I, I promise you this this gentleman is not that way he enjoys taxes, and he then makes you enjoy taxes. You're like, I've never enjoyed taxes in my entire life. I know, I know. Give him a second, and you'll understand. He's a, a best-selling author, national speaker, radio show host. He has his own uh, show on Blog Talk Radio, comes out on Tuesdays. He's uh, also writing articles for Entrepreneur.com, avid real estate investor, Partner at the law firm Kyler, Kohler, Ostermiller, and Sorensen. Uh, he's also a CPA. He speaks two languages. This is great. And he's written two books that what I, whose titles I must share with you. Because uh, the, the first one is Lawyers or Liars. Now, it's just funny. The title in and of itself. And then we also have What Your CPA Isn't Telling You. Uh, because clearly CPAs, you know, did not take a communication course. But this guy did. And you have to hear the information he's going to share with you. Because this is what I know. I know from practical experience, using his information, it has saved. I, I'm... I'm almost sure by now it's hundreds of thousands of dollars, possibly getting really close to millions. And what's amazing is that for you right now, you all you have to do is listen to Mr. Mark Kohler. Mark, you there? I'm here. Gosh, thank you for that wonderful introduction, Jay. I'm so excited to be here with you. <laughs> yes, this is fun. I know some people are probably thinking, what on earth could be fun about taxes? So, so Mark, I have to ask, what... Why, why are you so excited about taxes? Why does that matter? Hey, <laughs> because I love saving money. And I think everybody out there loves saving money. Everybody loves a good deal. Well, wouldn't it be nice to get a better deal on your tax return? And it's possible. Everybody thinks it is what it is, but it's not. You can be creative, strategic, and save thousands, uh, if not, like you said, millions maybe someday with good tax planning. <laughs> Indeed, but you're, you're making it sound like it's like that, you know that show, that extreme couponing? I mean, that's saving money, right? You know, you can click coupons and you go to the grocery store and somehow you, you know, don't have to pay anything for your groceries. You're telling me that, that inside our tax code, there's a way to save money? Because all I hear is complaints, you know, from most people about taxes. <laughs> Well, that's a good question, and it doesn't have to be as complicated as couponing and uh, or couponing, <laughs> sorry, and uh, <laughs> and then you know being the weird guy at the the register with this you know stack of coupons. Really, it's it's having a conversation and doing some strategic planning. And the problem is, most CPAs are poor communicators. They don't want to strategize. They want to take your info, plug it in, and spit it out. And it's a chronic problem in the CPA financial planning industry. Either people are giving bad advice because they're good communicators and they're just trying to communicate, but the people that oftentimes know what the strategies are, they don't know how to constructively say it where people can understand it or not go to sleep. And it's tough. <laughs> so uh, it's possible, though. It's possible. So how did you develop this gift? That's amazing to me. I mean, you, you're, you know, you can speak taxes and English at the same time. And <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. 
Well, it took a lot of time to get here, and I I was all I have to admit I went into accounting uh, because I thought it was my weakest area. I when I was in business school, I was a pretty good communicator, and I liked management, and I liked marketing. But I thought, you know what? If I could go into accounting, I might stand out. And so it was a very strategic decision of mine, truly, to go into accounting because uh, I, I felt I could uh, – I enjoyed numbers, but I didn't love them. But I love communicating more. And when people get a sense of this, it changes lives. It's so exciting to feel the thrill and excitement in someone when they go, oh, my gosh, why didn't my CPA tell me that? I, well, yeah, that's probably the question that everyone's wondering. Why didn't my CPA tell me that? So speaking of that, what are some of the things? Okay, uh, most people listening right now are probably interested in real estate investing, specifically from a cash flow standpoint, or may, possibly even fixing and flipping. But what are some of the things, like when you sit down with a, a, a brand new person who's considering going into business or who's complaining about taxes, what are some of those things that go through your head that, um, these are things you should know that your CPA probably hasn't told, told you. What are, what are some of those top things that you hear all, most often? Well, you bet. Well, and absolutely, I've got a list today, and I know that we won't have time to get through all of them, and certainly not in detail. But uh, what I mostly hope to accomplish is to bring to awareness many of your listeners some of these strategies that, again, if they're not having proactive conversations on these strategies with their planner, they got the wrong, the wrong planner, whoa, and they whoa, need whoa. to be looking into you it. You said proactive? What, what's a proactive conversation with a tax guy? What does that look like? <laughs> 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 what that looks like is you calling up your tax person. And I know some of you out there are like, oh, I'm just using TurboTax. Because, because it's true, Jay. It's so many people are just um, disinterested in tax planning. They think it is what it is. They're, they're frustrated with the accounting uh, industry. So they just pick up TurboTax and do it themselves. Or, again, they're not having a conversation. So I want people to be proactive from this. And I'd like all of you that are listening, have a piece of paper or a post-it next to you and, and, and maybe make a few notes of, oh, I need to talk about this. Because, folks, here's the thing. An accountant very well may not call you up and say, let's have a strategy session. But you can certainly take the initiative, and you can go to your accountant and say, hey, why aren't you talking to me about S-corporations? That'll be my, one of my first things I want to talk about here. But, and, and, and have that conversation. And if they're not rocking your world and being excited and energetic and creative, you got the wrong planner. <laughs> yes, excited, energetic, and creative. Uh, wow, that's a high order. Is that, is that possible? It is possible. It is here at the Kohler firm. It is yeah, possible. Yes, well, that, uh, there aren't many. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so strategy one. So I'm going to burn through these strategies. And I know some of you are listening to this uh, near the end of the year. So these are some good year-end tax planning points. Also, some of you at the beginning of the year, this is something to dial in for the new year. But frankly, anytime, these are topics you should be aware of. So the first strategy I want to talk about is the S, as in small, S corporation. And for those of you doing real estate, you may think, well, I don't need to incorporate. I'm just buying rental properties, and I need an LLC. And we'll, you know, I hope you listen to the podcast that we ultimately have on asset protection, and we'll talk more about LLCs. But, but the reality is, is when some of you out there are doing fix and flips or rehabs or wholesaling, and you may be getting a commission as a contractor or a uh, realtor, hey, you're going to have what's called ordinary income, and it's going to be subject to self-employment tax and it can cost you thousands and thousands of dollars before you even hit state and federal. So the bottom line is, if you're generating short-term revenue as a real estate investor, again, that's rehabbing or fix and flipping or turning a contract or a property in under 12 months, oftentimes the IRS is going to classify you as a real estate professional, which some of you don't want. Other people may want. That's another tip. We'll come to that in a minute. But, but, but the bottom line is, you're going to have to deal with self-employment tax. And the S corporation is the most strategic and best way to save on self-employment tax. And for those out there that are already small business owners, this is like your, your dentist or contractor or engineer, you're getting a 1099. What I want you to do is set up the S corporation, funnel the money through there. You're going to take part W-2, pay your FICA on that, but the bulk of your revenue is going to flow through as a K-1, and you're not going to pay self-employment tax. It's also exempt from many of the Obamacare taxes, and it's going to help save you on, on the line on your tax return. It's huge. Okay. Yeah, all right. So you just used a whole bunch of words. K-1s, 1099s, Obamacare. Oh, is this, do you think that's the reason people just stop? Because that, that well, one's... Well, they may. And, 
Go ahead. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. I know in this podcast, I, I, you know, you listeners out there, please know I already warned Jay. I mean, we could take a whole <laughs> hour just on this S corporation topic. And so if some of those words just went right over your head and you're like, whoa, what happened there? We don't have time to get into it today. But here's what I do have to say. If you are generating self-employment, ordinary income, and you have not specifically at least reviewed or looked at the S corporation as a possibility – in your tax return, you got a problem. So that's my tip number one. Look at the S Corp. Start to understand. I've got blogs on this. I've got radio shows myself on this. There's, uh, there's tons of information out there. But the trick is, is being aggressive with your salary. And if your accountant says, oh, you've got to take a big salary, it won't work, get a second freaking opinion. I'll tell you now. So that's strategy number one. Get the S Corp option on the table. I, you know, it, it's amazing how something that simple uh, is has been very, very effective. Uh, I'm just kind of curious. On average, when you have a, when someone begins to employ this strategy, like if what they have as a business, maybe they, you know, pet care, daycare, whatever, um, you know, landscaper. If they've got a business and then all they've done is just go and create an S corporation. Say that, you know, revenues are just mildly two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000, something like that. What what have you been able to see? What kind of savings is it? Is it really worth the trouble? Oh, you bet. On the low end, if anybody listening is netting, this is your net income. So you might be bringing in sixty, seventy thousand, and you're writing off thirty or forty, but you're netting around fifty grand. If you're netting fifty grand, the S corporation conservatively will already save you three to four thousand dollars. Now if you're making a hundred grand, two hundred, three hundred grand, the savings just goes up. And it could be well over ten thousand dollars or more in savings by just simply converting to an S Corp. And around the turn of the year right in November, December, or January, February, is a great time to get that S-Corporation going, although you can start at any time. So, um, again, get a consult if you're in that ordinary income phase. You know, what's, what's the, the greatest thing that I hope everyone hears about that is that just because you save more, it doesn't mean it costs more <laughs> to, actually in, to, to actually establish and maintain and run that particular entity. There is a way to make these things work for you. And don't look at your tax planning as a burden, but actually something that could become very, very beneficial. And this one simple thing can, I, I know personally, can save you uh, a whole lot of money, <laughs> a whole lot of money. So yep. what yep. else? What else is out there? Say, okay. you know, number uh, two. You yes. Now this is it. an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Number two, and this is an easy one, is folks have a healthy respect for your bookkeeping system. Now, I know that may seem like, Mark, give me something sexy here, some cool start. i got a couple more here, for, at least, for sure. But I need to bring this up right up uh, at the beginning because there's so many people that start dipping their toe into small business by buying a little real estate or they're just testing the waters when it comes to being an entrepreneur, but they have no plan at all for bookkeeping. They're not familiar with QuickBooks. Um, they, are, they throw everything in a shoebox. They may at best try to do something on Excel. Folks, this is where you're going to lose write-offs, you're going to pull your hair out, and you're going to blame small business rather than blaming yourself. Get into it. Either hire a local bookkeeper, outsource a little bookkeeping to an accounting firm like ours, do a little QuickBooks course, learn a little bit about it so you can manage it very simply. Online QuickBooks, uh, there's so much QuickBooks Pro for the desktop version. There's so many wonderful ways to just track your income and track your expenses. And folks, it's going to save you money with write-offs and it's going to help you make better decisions. So get on it sooner rather than later. I I can't agree more on this one. In fact, I'm going to be a little bit stronger than Mark. Mark Mark's not willing to say what I'm about to say. I'm going to say don't even try to do it yourself. Just give it to Mark or somebody because it's better <laughs> that way. In fact, guys, I, I don't think I've shared this with you guys before, but I probably did, uh, and I don't even know if you know this, Mark, but I, I did – somewhere near my first 90 transactions before I had a, a bookkeeper or accountant or anything. And it was an absolute mess by that point, an absolute mess. And to fix it cost me well over six figures just to straighten it out because it was having to recreate everything. And then it was a matter of finding I think at, when all was said and done, we had to recreate and remember because there was like $400,000 that was unaccounted for 
And I'm like, I don't have the receipt. I don't know where it is. And we had to figure that out. Guys, do it now, <laughs> not later, now. Absolutely. You cannot wait in on this one. Okay, ready for number three because it's going to yes. blow your socks off. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Simple but easy. And it's very outside the box but very common amongst those that strategically plan and that is getting your family members on the payroll. Um, especially before year end, this is a critical deadline you want to hit and funnel the money through some family members. Now let me give some examples. Number one, if you have minor children, kids under age 18 that may be helping in the business, you don't have to withhold suit of food of FICA or workers' comp. You don't have to 1099 them, and you don't have to W-2 them. You can still claim them as an, an exemption and a dependent, and you can pay your kids up to six grand a year, and they don't even have to file a tax return. Folks, it's unbelievable. It's awesome when you have minor children getting them involved in your small business. It can save you thousands of dollars. If you've got three or four kids, uh, that's $10,000 to $15,000 you could funnel through their bank accounts for them participating legitimately in your business. Number two, what about the grandkids? Could you, spend, uh, could you 1099 your own children to hire the grandkids to help out with the business? Uh, it's it's one, one step away, one more a uh, piece of paperwork through the process because you've got to involve the parents. But paying grandkids uh, it directly would require a 1099 or W-2. So get your own kids involved in the system. What about your adult parents? What about nieces, nephews? Uh, who else are you helping support financially? If you're helping someone in the family financially, quit paying taxes and giving your family money. Put them on the payroll, either 1099 them or give them a W-2 or best case, if they're under age 18 and independent of yours, you don't have to do anything. It's, it's an amazing process that can save you thousands. So get your family involved. <laughs> you know what I just thought? I was like, hey, I could pay my kids and have them buy their own Christmas presents and get a write-off for it. That would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Uh, you never know what I might come up with the next time. But this here, here's the point, everyone when you surround yourself with the right information, you get to add your own ingenuity to it. Now, of course, you're going to need to run your ingenuity, your new fangled idea uh, by appropriate legal counsel or in, in tax counsel, simply because you never know. You're probably not the first one to come up with something that creative and they may have thought of that already. But what's amazing is that that thought just occurred to me. I was like, huh, I can make Christmas a little cheaper in one simple way. I, I just, Hadn't thought of it that way until just then. That's good. So what what do we got next? Well, I, I well, and let me just add one quick other example is if you have kids above age eighteen, my son who's at college, I'm able to ten ninety nine him for helping with a variety of uh, technical things he does in my business, whether it's website design or uh, email support or t uh, IT. These kids know computers better than we do, but I pay him and he pays for his own college tuition. Now I'm getting a write-off for college. Now this is, again, another wonderful way to skirt around some of the limitations on the lifetime learning credit and hope credit. So get your kids involved. Okay, number four. Uh, we got to bring it up because this is a real estate show, and that is rental <laughs> property. One that hits your you, – you love this topic, right, Jake? I do. <laughs> this one's near and dear to my heart. Yeah. So this is, this, is, this is really good. So anyway, um, I talk about this in my books, um, buy one rental property a year. It's a great way to build wealth, build tax-free cash flow, uh, experience entrepreneurship, get better write-offs, save taxes. There's all these ancillary benefits. But the biggest one I want to emphasize from an accountant's perspective is when you own rental property, it gives me something to work with on your tax return. We might elect you to be an active investor or a real estate professional. It gives me options for more strategic planning on where to write off your travel. I'd love you to buy rental properties where you go on a regular basis to visit family or your vacation areas. Uh, it, it, it's a great way to build deferred tax write-offs in a passive loss carry forward uh, scenario. The list goes on and on. And I, as an accountant, I can't emphasize it enough, and I, I'm shocked 
by how CPAs do not talk about this more. It just, it's just weird to me because they just poo-poo it and they think it's more work than it's worth. When my wealthy clients, Jay, I sit down with hundreds if not thousands of clients every year, whether it's a workshop or one-on-one -on -one consults, and I'll tell you right now, my wealthy clients buy real estate. It's part of the portfolio. They got a well-rounded portfolio, but all of my wealthy clients absolutely have rental property on their books, and it's, it's life-changing. And uh, well, life changing is an understatement for for most and definitely for me. And I, I saw the same thing when I was previously a financial planner and an insurance guy. All the ones, all the people who had a decent financial plan by the time we were done always had some form of rental real estate in their portfolio. But what's really fun is, uh, Mark, I, I'm finally doing the real estate where you like to travel piece. I, I've done I try to do everything you say and then the real estate where you travel. So I, I found this nice place uh, in Central America in Belize where uh, we're, instead of, you know, they didn't have anything for me to buy, so we're building it. Um, and that is just going to be awesome when it's all said and done. But that's one way to, to make it happen is have fun with your business. Don't let your business, you know, control you in that particular sense, but you have the ability to decide where you can do real estate wherever you want to do it. So it might as well be someplace pretty. Yep, absolutely. Well, <clears throat> next strategy, which all of you I know is at the, the top of your list of things to avoid or think about, and that's Obamacare. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We want to spend hours and hours trying to access a website that doesn't work. Um, go ahead. No, no, no. I hear you. It, there, there are some frustrating aspects, but folks, in general, Obamacare does open up more planning opportunities for especially the small business owner. And I know it's a very politically charged topic, so I won't make any political statements, but just say this. Learn about it and learn what your options are. And let me give you a few suggestions right now that can be very, very powerful. Number one, as a small business owner, you're able to deduct your insurance premiums. Millions of Americans aren't able to do that. The uh, itemized deduction has been limited even further this year. Uh, it's now uh, limited to 10% of your adjusted gross income. You can't write off anything until above that figure, 10% of your AGI. It's terrible. But small business owners have a lot more options. Number one, you should be writing off your insurance premiums. Number two, when you're shopping for insurance, whether it's on an exchange or with an independent broker, Mention the fact you're a small business owner. You may be able to get into a group strategy. Hiring your spouse, again, may give you a two-person group and give you more options for better plans. Number three, think about the small business health care tax credit. For any of you that have employees other than family, there are incredible tax credits to get a refund, essentially, on the premiums you're paying for your employees. You can attract better employees, you can provide health care and, and retain employees longer, and get a tax credit for it. Now, if you have 50 employers or more, the government hits you over the head and makes you provide insurance. But if you have <laughs> under 50 employees, there's some really nice carrots out there to incentivize you to buy insurance for your employees. Next, think about the health savings account. I love the health savings account. You get a higher deductible, a lower premium, and you can put money away for yourself, self-insuring yourself for health care. Great tax write-offs. You can self-direct your HSA, which we'll talk about here later, but the, it's <laughs> unbelievable what you can do with your HSA. And then finally, for you mom and pop um, small businesses with just one or two employees, husband, wife, and maybe a child, you can do what's called an HRA, a health reimbursement arrangement, where you can take additional write-offs for any out-of-pocket expenses over and above your premiums. And if you don't use the health savings account, for those that are unhealthy, this can be a life-changing experience with those of you that have maybe a, a terminal illness or, or cancer or a child with, with um, a handicap of some sort, or you've got a, uh, someone, a family member a dependent in drug rehab, or you have high prescription drugs, or who knows what. The list goes on and on on valid health care deductions you can take in a small business that no one else in the country can take advantage of. But again, these are things your CPA should be talking to you about, and that's an active strategy for your health care expenses, because there's really a lot of options, Jay. Okay, hopefully you're enjoying, yes, Mark Kohler and all of the information that he is sharing with you. And I know, as I've said before, I say again, 
it is one of the most important things that you can stay on top of is understanding your taxes because it has the ability because you once you learn to go out there and earn a whole bunch of you know money or currency or create the value and get paid for it you want to keep it and to be able to do that you need to understand some of the things that mark is talking about now not just understand them not just know about them but know them and you don't know them until you use them and if you and as mark has said many times and we'll say again if you and your advisors aren't having this conversation and you aren't using them, then you don't know them. So please hear that and go out there and get something done. Now, want to get you back to the interview. Before we do so, though, however, let's go over our cash flow question so that those of you who sent in the answer know that you won. In fact, you probably already been contacted already. So it's kind of anticlimactic. But for those of you who didn't send in the answer and you're curious, here was the question from last week. What type of income is specifically mentioned and taxed in Obamacare that applies to rental real estate? That type of income is passive income. That was the answer that we were looking for. Now, there are many variations of that, and some of you sent in some very complete answers, so good job. Way to go. And you have a copy of the cash flow creation system uh, reserved for you that I will sign and send to you once it's published, and you will be encouraged about how quickly you can build your passive income because that inside that book for those of you who don't know it's a book uh, that i'm in the process of finishing and writing etc 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 and you'll be able to win a copy for free by answering the question and i just lay out my entire business model people ask me all the time how do you raise money how do you do wholesale how do you combine all the three how do you make all this stuff happen and that's exactly what's in the book all right so i like asking the questions though to help you develop as a real estate investor or just an investor in general, because this information and understanding these distinctions are, are part of my journey and how I've been able to do the things that I've done. So this week's question, here we go. What specific tax benefit does not pass through when using the entity known as an LP or limited partnership? I'll repeat the question. What specific tax benefit doesn't pass through when using a entity commonly known as an LP or limited partnership? Now, I'm specifically looking, and this applies, of course, to U.S. real estate. Uh, so for those of you who are listening in, in Germany, U.K., and other places, uh, I'm talking about U.S. real estate here. Okay, so keep that in mind, but feel free to send in your answer because I think you can still pick up on it. And it's one of the huge benefits when it comes to owning real estate, especially in the United States of America. With that being said, though, let us get you back to the interview with Mark Kohler. Even though I know you've you've said this to me before, I'm hearing it completely differently because I, I just brought on my first uh, actual employee who's W-2 and all this other stuff because uh, we've been able to, you know, keep it, quote, keep our, you know, organization small enough to where we had didn't really have that need but now it's it's too late now so and now it, it's all sounding different and, I, and i'm saying that to everyone listening because taxes is is not something you do once and then just forget about it you've heard mark say many times have that conversation initiate the conversation what does that mean that means at least i can say in my life for the past four or five years it's around this time in fact it's on my calendar for i think a week from now or so uh where i sit down with the individuals in my life who understand what's going on uh, from a tax standpoint and we literally develop a plan now, what's interesting is because it's real estate related and because of everything that Mark said, we're developing a plan on how to make sure we don't pay any taxes for the foreseeable future more than we are planning how do we you know, pay as little as possible because real estate has so many benefits to you know, everything uh, that, that it comes down to. It's just, it's just amazing. Anyway, um, what else you got, Mark? Okay, next. Talk about with your planner and your financial advisor, and this is where your uh, ongoing series is so, so powerful, Jay, is talking about your retirement accounts. Now, there's a two-pronged approach to retirement accounts that a lot of CPAs miss out on again. It's not only maximizing the contribution 
and tailoring it to your situation. It's also once you get the money in your retirement account, it's learning the concept of self-directing. Now, putting off the self-directing comment for just a moment, let's just talk about contributions. There are old school strategies still out there that drive me insane, and they primarily regard, are in regards to the SEP, or the Self-Employment Pension. There's so many CPAs that are still practicing in the 20th century going, oh, if I'll just have my client make a SEP contribution with their sole proprietorship. It costs you so much in self-employment tax to use a SEP strategy. You're far better off with what's now called the solo 401k in a small business. And many of you that have thought about putting away retirement money need to look at what's my overall income and how much can I put in? Is an IRA a good fit? Is a Roth a good fit? Is a 401k a good fit? A SEP? Find out the timing and the dollar amounts that fit you the best. And and Jay, I want to just say this, and as a lead into your, your feelings on this, is some of you may go, oh, Mark, I'll just buy more rentals. I don't want to put money in a 401k or an IRA because I'll never see it and I can't control it. Folks, that's the misnomer. You, by putting your money into a retirement account, you can shift real estate opportunities into your retirement account through self-directing, which motivates us even more to consider this entire strategy. It, it's just really eye-opening. I mean, Jay, I mean, this is this has changed your world in a lot of ways. <laughs> that is the foundation of uh, my business is being able to take others retirement plan and actually create a sustainable stream of cash flow for them. And it's it feels good to, to write those checks uh, to the investors on a monthly basis because I know what it means. I know for some it means they get to ride around the world or at least the U.S. anyway in, in their RV. And that's what they think about. You know, they're riding around and we're out there providing clean, safe, affordable housing but uh, for those of you who are specifically like interested in fixing and flipping this strategy is something you must understand because you get killed in taxes because you are the one doing the deal not your retirement plan and if you want more information when it comes to self-direction etc we did an episode i believe it's episode 33 if you go back uh, over to itunes you type in ryan rippy r y a n r I P P Y. Um, we did an entire episode on this one singular topic because it was the key. Many of you ask, how do you find the money? Where does the money come from? How did you get started? Well, if it wasn't for understanding that 401ks and IRAs could be used f inside of a real estate transaction, I don't know that I would have had the start I needed. I wouldn't have known how to get to the things that I needed to get to. And I can easily say um, that I've done hundreds of transactions involving retirement plans. In fact, it, it's still a major part uh, of the business today. And I, as far as I know, it's going to be a major part for, for quite some time. I mean, can you imagine the feeling of being able to, you know, someone entrusts you with their retirement plan, but you end up in a situation where you're able to create a, a sustainable stream of income for them so that they can finally feel like, I can retire. They don't have to worry about trying to build up this big pile of cash. It's it's an incredible feeling. And I know you're like, this is a tax conversation. But if it wasn't for individuals like Mark, I, I don't know that I would be able to even bring this information to you or do the things that I do. And it's little things like that and interpreting them properly so that you can go out there and use them that make all the difference. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so um, to give some of you a little more specific uh, information on what this means on a practical level, uh, some of you are listening going, what are they talking about self-directing? <laughs> Basically, it's the strategy <laughs> of taking your IRA, your 401k, your SEP, your Simple, your Keo, your health savings account, your kid's college IRA, any of those tax-preferred vehicles can be invested in more creative assets, not just Wall Street stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. You can take your IRA, for, you know, which means all of those types of uh, vehicles, let's just call it an IRA for now. That IRA can buy a rental property. It could do a rehab, a wholesale, a fix and flip. I've had clients buy Super Bowl tickets and sell them on StubHub a year later. They can buy racehorses, farms, ranches, cabins, operational businesses, uh, uh, you know, a subway, I don't care. Now, there are a few rules on how much you can participate, but you can be involved much more than you realize. And it's certainly at a manager level, having a checkbook control access to your IRA to invest in things quickly and get a better return, far in excess of what you might get in Wall Street. 
And this is something that Wall Street doesn't want you to know. This is why your broker isn't telling you because they don't get a commission when you buy these creative types of assets. So, again, learn about this, study about it, follow me a little more closely. Of course, I'll give you some ways to stay in touch with me on this. And my partner's coming out with a new book this year called The Self-Directed IRA Handbook. It should be out any day. Some of you, by the time you listen to it, it'll be out. There's really a lot of options and opportunities here. It's the biggest opportunity, um, in my opinion, because it's there's a lot of capital sitting on the sidelines and individuals like, you know, that you are you're endeavoring. You're listening to this podcast to learn and individuals who have their retirement plans are looking for you. They want to know that you exist, that there's an option for them. And, and we get to be that option. And that's one of the greatest things that I enjoy about, you know, what I get to do these days anyway. What else you got, Mark? Okay, well, the last strategy, and this will be um, uh, probably, I call this kind of the grab bag of where a lot of people just miss out on the little things that add up so much. And I'm talking about dining, entertainment, home office, PDAs, laptops, equipment, uh, travel, all these little things that people don't track as much as they should. And this probably goes a little bit back to the bookkeeping system. But folks, the rule is, the IRS says under Code Section 62, is that you can deduct any expense incurred for the production of income. So if this expense, whether it's a dining out opportunity, it's a new iPhone uh, down at the Apple Store, it's internet in the house, it's home office, it's uh, computers, whatever it is, if it, direct, if it relates to your business at all, I want to write it off com- entirely or at least a good portion of it. And if your CPA is whittling you back and holding you back and saying, no, you can't deduct this and no, you can't get deduct that, maybe they're right, but it's worth getting a second opinion because there are so many deductions people leave on the table. I loved, We could just talk another, an, another half hour just on auto deduction strategies. Do you <laughs> lease? Do you buy? Do you do mileage? How do you track your mileage? Do you, do you have a good iPhone or Android app? What do you do? You know, th- it goes on and on. So, folks, these are the little things that so many small business owners and just simple little real estate investors that have just one or two rentals, they don't take good uh, record keeping to heart and they miss out. So uh, folks, don't give up on those little things. You know, Mark, what's funny is that I was in the Apple store the other day, which surprises nobody listening. Uh, But I was in the Apple (laughs) store the other day and I saw something. I was like, Mark needs to know about this. There's this new device that I saw that you literally plug into your car, talks to your car's computer, and not only does it track, you know, gas and uh, gas mileage and miles and all this other stuff, but it tracks engine history or engine health and all these other things. And it sends it straight to your phone. It records everything in the cloud. You don't even have to uh, and you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is turn on your car and it automatically tracks all that stuff uh, as it relates to your car anyway. Um at when you drive, where you drive, how far you drive, point to point. I just thought it was like the neatest thing ever uh, on the planet, and it works across many different car models and, and all those types of things. So anyway, it was just... I love it. I love it. I totally thought of you when I saw that. And then, of course, every time I see the Tesla Model S, I think of you as well, uh, because I still want that car, because that just sounds like a whole lot of fun uh, to me. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Got it. So, okay, Mark, clearly, in, you know, in one quick short episode, we can't get everything that is necessary to to change our tax life. Although I can confidently say the information you have shared, if we act upon it, um, could definitely pay for the cost that they've paid for this podcast, which is, well, nothing. So um, (laughs) we can at least cover that expense. But my question to you is, uh, what, if I want more, how can I go in and find out more in depth of what I need to do, or maybe some questions I should be asking? Because Here's one thing I've seen, especially with the people that I've worked with. Um, They have a person who's doing taxes, and sometimes they're related to that person. Or they have someone who's been filling this role, but they still feel like there's more that they should be doing. How do I navigate that, that awkwardness and be able to bring this stuff up, too? Well, I think the first thing is to call your tax advisor and go, I'd like a planning meeting. Now, they may f- fall off their chair. They may <laughs> stutter on the phone and go, oh, a planning meeting? Uh, okay, what do you want to talk about? Well, I'd like to talk about ways to save taxes. And if they say, well, you're doing all you can. 
Well, I don't think so, because I was just listening to a podcast yesterday, and this Mark Kohler guy was brought up five or six different things that, you know, we're not even talking about. Well, what are they? And, you know, if the, if the CPA planner that you're, or advisor that you're talking to, first of all, doesn't want to have a planning meeting, or they're offended, or they're defensive, or they're demeaning, folks, move on. It is shocking to me how many people put up with this planner in their lives because, well, I've had him for years. It's my brother-in-law, or I inherited him from my dad or mom. They've been in the family for years. I could never get rid of them. I'd be too, they'd be so offended. Guys, they could be costing you thousands of dollars. What's more important, maybe paying an extra bill or two a month, getting your, saving enough taxes to pay that extra car payment, or maybe having a retirement? Are you kidding me? It's worth offending it's not worth offending someone. I, I, I just, it just is shocking to me. So start by asking for, for a planning meeting and, and see what they say. And if, if they're not rolling up their sleeves or rubbing their hands together in, in, a, in a very kind and proactive way, just get a second opinion and move on. Call my office for crying out loud. We'd love to talk to you. Got it. Got it. And so with that being said, what are some of the ways that uh, we can either find out more information? Do you have any you know, a website, a course, anything that we could do to just to do some more self-study so that we can have some intelligent questions? Oh, you bet. And folks, this okay, let me give you a couple tax write-offs as well to invest <laughs> in a little education. And this is not, I, I know there's a lot of boot camps and coaching programs out there that are thousands and thousands of dollars. This is a very simple self-study uh, option for some of you that could be very affordable, and it's a tax write-off to boot. I have a little tax and legal library of videos that I'm constantly updating. I've been offering to my clients for three or four years. There's about 15 different videos on there on topics that we just even talked about today. For 300 bucks, uh, you can access that, and it's lifetime access. You don't get any new bills for being a part of that, and you get little updates when new videos are recorded. I have a, a, a QuickBooks seminar series where you can learn QuickBooks for just a couple hundred bucks. These QuickBooks videos are so fun. They make bookkeeping hilarious. It, it, they're unbelievable. Uh, you've you got to watch them, to, and you'll be amazed, and you can uh, see a little demo about those on my website too. I have a monthly webinar where you can look at my computer screen and ask me questions as low as 20 bucks a month just to, to get access to my brain and, and I'll share all the strategies I can think of over these recorded webinars. So uh, that's just to start. You can sign up for my weekly newsletter that's free. Uh, so there's a link, I'm sure, on the email from Jay uh, that gets you into my website and it, you can look at the, all the options there for a few hundred bucks that can save you thousands and thousands of dollars and give you the support you need. Absolutely. In fact, just you'll be able to go over to cashflowdiary.com forward slash Mark Kohler. You'll be able to see it. It'll be very, very clear. And we'll get that uh, get you that information as quickly as we possibly can. One of the things that I want to stress here is many of you may think I, I've done all that. I did it before. I want you to know I still listen. I'm still following Mark around because here's what happens. As you go out there, you're building cash flow. Today, you might have zero rental properties. You might suddenly hit your stride and, you know, before the next few months are over, you have 20 rental properties. And yes, I believe 20 in, in a year is totally possible. I know Mark said one, but that doesn't mean you only have to get one. But what I will say is this. Every time you hear and get revi revisit this information, you are a different person and hearing it and, and experiencing it again for the, you know hundredth time it is still valuable so there's never a time that you won't uh, get something so long as you continually stay in action continually keep the the phrase now o'clock and moving at the speed of instruction on the front of your mind because you you know uh, this is it's, it's only you know your entire life we're talking about here changing and making a little bit better just by giving you more information that you have to act on and with this information you can go out there and create a absolute phenomenal business. With that being said, Mark, what would you say to that person who's, man, thinking about and considering and hoping one day that their life could be different? They Maybe they think real estate's the way to do it. Maybe they think business ownership's the way to do it. Um, what would you say to them? What have you seen? Because you, you work with a lot of small business owners, and, and I'm sure that you, you, you've got some words of wisdom to, to share with everyone. Well, thank you so much. I, I would just say that entrepreneurship, 
having at least a little small business on the side, having a little rental property on the side, and trying to invest in a new rental property every year or two at the, late, at the least. Folks, this is the method to build a retirement and find more financial freedom. Are there risks? I guess. I think it's more risky not to do anything. If you want to just keep working for the man, get the W-2 and hope it turns out and Social Security is going to be your lifeline, folks, I'm scared for you. Um, I don't have anything else except trying to do a little something on the side, taking something you love, a hobby, or even just getting excited about real estate and a little rental property in your hometown or near your parents or kids. Do something. And listening to a webinar series like Jay's here is the first step. First step. If, you, if you haven't just found this as an additional resource in your quest, folks, the American dream is alive and well. Don't give up. Find that little small business that you're passionate about. Find that little piece of real estate that you're interested in and get the education you need to make something happen. I'm not going anywhere. I'm trying to be America's voice for the small business owner on tax and legal strategies. And uh, it, we're for real. We've been here 12 years. Every strategy I talked about on the show today, uh, we've had clients uh, take advantage of those for years. Uh, paying your kids. It, it never had a client even audited on that strategy. I mean, it's just there's so much out there that people are missing out on. So, Jay, just keep spreading the good word, man. You're doing an awesome <laughs> job. We're, we're doing the best you can. You know, it was funny when you said hobbies. I, I've taken to I've, – I've got uh, some uh, GoPro cameras mounted to some remote-controlled helicopters, and I was uh, – uh, videoing and phot photographing or taking photos of some surfers uh, the other day. And, and you know, uh, when you said hobbies, I suddenly thought of, hey, Mark, how, how are you going to turn your surfing into a hobby? I'm sure you could or, or to a business. I'm sure you could figure out a way to write that off. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, at least a trip here and there, uh, something. Uh, and, you know, entertainment, legitimate entertainment, talking business and, inter you know, involving others or maybe some charity work uh, with surfing or whatever the passion is in your life. There's, if there's a will, there's a way. So, um, indeed, uh, indeed. Anyway. Excellent, Mark. Thank you for being here. Now, guys, I know we spent a lot of time talking about taxes, but get this. Mark has agreed to come back and talk to us about legal strategies. Now, yeah, now you're like, great, right? Legal. <laughs> but it, I promise you, it will be a different legal conversation than you have ever heard. And it, too, will change your life. So make sure that you catch that episode, too. Until next time. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.